Nano Science and Nano Technology course, lecture number 10. I am Dr. Parvez Ahmed. Uh, in this particular lecture, so we will have a discussion on the valve crystal shapes uh, as a part of physical properties of the nanomaterial. So let's proceed towards uh, today's lecture. So uh, we start our discussion from uh, valve crystal shapes. So, valve crystal shapes, uh, first of all, we should have uh, some brief introductions uh, about uh, the valve crystal shapes and uh, we will define and explain that why we need the valve crystal shapes and how that can be utilized and the growth uh, of the crystal and why it is important in the nanoscience and nanotechnology. So, valve uh, crystal shapes are valve crystals, they are basically used to determine uh, the shape of a crystals when formed under uh, thermodynamic equilibrium conditions. I mean, uh, thermodynamically, we basically try to grow, uh, I mean, the crystal structures. So, uh, valve crystal shapes is basically, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's been basically a concept uh, used to determine the shape of a crystals uh, under uh, different thermodynamic uh, conditions. Uh, so, uh, under thermodynamic conditions, I mean, when we try to grow the crystal, different type of the crystal, so we basically are trying to uh, control the surface energy. Uh, that is, uh, we specify the surfaces and for those surfaces, uh, I mean, we define the areas of high energies. I mean, that, that, that is the, the practical thing we do in uh, valve crystal. So, uh, what actually we have in valve crystals, uh, in valve crystals, we have different phases uh, that which have uh, different surface energies. I mean, uh, we have a crystals or we have crystals uh, that have different phases. Uh, but all of the phases, uh, they have, all of the surfaces, they have uh, different energies. I mean, we have, uh, that, that later on, we will define from the example uh, by showing the uh, the phases of the, the crystal, the warp crystals. And we will show that how the different surfaces, they have uh, different energies. Later on in the, in the, the course, or uh, in this particular lecture, we will define and we will explain that. So, the objective of the wall crystal is basically to minimize the total surface energy of the crystal. I mean, this is the key objective for uh, the valve crystals. I mean, that why, uh, I mean, well, if one asks that why we need the valve crystals, uh, or what is the objective of the valve crystal? So the objective for the valve uh, crystal is to minimize the total surface energy uh, of the crystal. So here you can see, uh, I mean, uh, we have plots uh, for uh, the wall crystals, I mean, these are the shape, wall crystal shapes. Uh, these two plots uh, represent a simplified view of the crystal faces in two dimensions. I mean, here we have uh, two dimension that is X and Y. And these uh, two dimensions, uh, these are basically the plots, uh, I mean, the simplified uh, view of the crystal places in two dimensions. So, Miller indices uh, in the 2D uh, here, uh, uh, we have the notations. And we remember the notation is based on where the planes or paces crosses the x and y axis. I mean, here you can see that if you consider this particular one. So here we have this is the x plane and the, uh, this is the x plane, and uh, this is the y. Uh, these are the y planes. So here we have the intercept. Uh, intercept x is equal to infinity. I mean, here you can see that we don't we don't have. I mean, you cannot see an intercept at a, a defined location. That's why we have put it uh, equal to infinity. But here we have at y axis, we have the intercept. Uh, that is uh, intercept y is equal to 1. So we have the phase. Uh, the phase is uh, 0, 1. I mean, this is the phase uh, that is equal to uh, 0, 1. So uh, for this particular structures, uh, for this particular crystals, we have a family of the crystal phases. Uh, that include all of the following phases. I mean here all of the possible phases that might be uh, 1, 0, uh, minus 1, 0, uh, 0, 1 and 0, minus 1. I mean these are all the possible combinations of the, of the crystal phases that we may have uh, I mean for this sort of the combinations. But if we have the intercept just like the one shown here that is we have intercept x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. So the pace uh, that we will have 
uh, here uh, for this particular structure uh, that will be uh, one one phase and the combination or family of the crystal phases uh, will include all of the following here that it uh, that is uh, we, we can have uh, one one minus one one uh, and minus uh, one minus one uh, one and minus one I mean these are the family of the crystal phases uh, which we can have for uh, these combinations. So, wall plots, uh, what actually we mean by uh, wall plots? So, here is uh, the example of the wall, uh, uh, the wall plots. So, here uh, we remember we have the length, and here if you consider, we have two kinds of the, uh, we have uh, arrows. Uh, so, we have two kinds of arrows, uh, one in blue and the other in uh, red and both of these corresponds to different phases the the length of the arrow uh, here is proportion to the surface energy i mean uh, we have these arrows uh, i mean the red arrows and the blue arrows uh, and uh, be remember here uh, their lengths uh, they, they they basically represents or they are they basically proportions to the surface energy of the phases i mean we have the phases I mean these are the faces I mean for the one particular intercept I mean it represent one kind of intercept and this one I mean it's another kind of faces uh, I mean these, these are the different faces so uh, the arrow length is proportion to the surface energy of the face uh, so uh, what it mean it mean that the longer the arrows uh, denote higher energy surfaces I mean if we have uh, the arrows uh, I mean uh, longer arrows so it would mean that we have higher energy surfaces uh, okay so what it mean here uh, I mean it's just like I mentioned uh, we have two kind of the surfaces uh, are the faces uh, here uh, you can see that here this one uh, is basically the one one family so one one family I mean it's increasing here I mean here you can see that uh, one one is basically the one one facing uh, is, is increasing here I mean here you can see that uh, the one one family it's I mean it's increasing in shape or uh, the surface energy for the one one faces increases but uh, like that if we compare the family uh, one zero so one zero it's remain constant I mean there is no increase in the family or uh, the energy uh, the energy of one zero faces uh, I mean it remain constant so what actually we have uh, upon these combinations uh, just like we have here I mean one uh, combination that is uh, the energy I mean here you can see that I mean this one uh, I mean for uh, especially the one zero family uh, the energy of these remain constant but for uh, one one combination or for one one phases the energy increases I mean the more we proceed further the more we have the higher energy for the surfaces so if we want to get the crystal the valve crystals uh, from these so the crystals I mean how we can draw the crystal shapes uh, under these condition so what actually how we will draw the crystal shapes uh, under these condition so for that uh, draw outline of innermost faces I mean for uh, in order to draw the crystals under uh, from these particular condition so what we will have to do so first of all we have to draw outlines of innermost uh, faces to determine the shape of the crystals I mean for determining the shape of the crystals first of all we have to draw outline of innermost faces okay so then the reason is that high energy faces expel less surface area to the external environment so how that will be uh, I mean if we proceed according to that so we will have we will have a crystals I mean the warp crystals uh, just like this uh, for this particular conditions and if we proceed uh, just according to this definitions if we proceed for this one so we will have a crystal structure like this so here you can see that here we have all the faces uh, I mean it's, uh, it's, it's for one one family corresponds to the a one one family I mean it's increasing energy faces and here you can see that uh, the length of all the faces is almost uh, I mean the same but unlike this uh, if we draw it uh, according to these conditions so here we you can see that uh, we have the surfaces I mean this surface and this surface uh, I mean the adjacent surfaces they are the same but we have also the same uh, we, we also have the surfaces at the corner so what it mean 
it mean uh, I mean these surfaces I mean uh, uh, these, these are the surfaces that correspond to low energy phase I mean these are the low energy phases while uh, this one the corner surfaces uh, the corner surfaces is high energy phase I mean this is what we have under uh, these conditions so this phase this basically corresponds to high energy phase and this one uh, this phase basically corresponds to the low energy phase and the same we can have for this particular structures I mean is grown under these conditions I mean uh, by increasing the energy so the shape of the crystal is also changes and so as the basis for the lower energy and for high energy I mean the high energy phases and low energy phases so again here we have I mean if you observe here so here uh, I mean it's uh, almost almost uh, the phases the low energy phases and high energy phases they are almost almost uh, the same if you proceed further so here again uh, you can see that uh, we have the high energy phases uh, I mean it's here and the low energy phases they are uh, here so these, these are these are the, the fact that how we changes the crystal structures uh, I mean under different uh, thermodynamic uh, conditions so uh, deviation from the ideal uh, crystal I mean it's, uh, how the crystal deviate from the ideal uh, crystal system so for that you have to remember that normally we have nanoparticles which is particularly uh, I mean in the form of nano crystals so it do not form well defined crystal faces I mean normally we have uh, I mean especially the, the people who are working in the field of nanotechnology are growing nanomaterials so they know that the nanoparticles uh, which also we call nano crystals they do not form well defined crystal faces so what actually we do we do uh, uh, perform uh, the valve crystals uh, I mean techniques I mean we trying to utilize some of the thermodynamic uh, parameters and where those thermodynamic parameters we trying to control are we trying to idealize uh, the shapes of the crystals or the nano crystals uh, that we have already grown so the valve crystal shapes are idealized cases where the crystal surfaces uh, surface energies determine the shapes I mean uh, the valve crystal shapes I mean uh, the valve crystal just like I mentioned in the start that the valve crystals uh, I mean it's just uh, some sort of the uh, idealized form for the crystal so what actually we have the valve crystal shapes are idealized cases where the crystal surface energies determines uh, the shapes under thermodynamic uh, conditions I mean uh, we have uh, specific thermodynamic conditions or uh, we have specific thermodynamic controls under which we idealize uh, the shape of the, uh, the crystals so uh, kinetic factor often uh, I mean under such, a, such a conditions the kinetic factor often play a major role in the crystal uh, growth so this explain why different process conditions can lead to different morphologies uh, for the same materials and that's why if you have a sample of the grown nanoparticles and you observe it under epicem uh, so you can see that uh, normally the morphology of all the crystal is do not remain the same so you have a range of morphologies and even and a single crystal so for that normally you adopt the warp crystal uh, growth uh, technique in order to get uh, a similar morphology or similar uh, shape for the uh, material or for your grown uh, nanoparticles so uh, we also have a concept that of roughening temperature so what is mean uh, by roughening temperature uh, is basically a temperature uh, above which the surface atoms on a growing crystals have increased mobility and well-defined phases uh, do not form I mean or that's why we call that a uh, roughening temperature I mean it's a, such a temperatures uh, I mean above which if we uh, want to grow uh, the crystal so we have the surfaces for those atoms uh, where the increased mobility I mean do not form the well-defined phases for that particular uh, crystal so that's why we call that uh, roughening temperature so it, it elevated it elevated temperature I mean are in increasing temperatures all the phases tend to have similar energies and this is the main concept that is the key concept uh, that the example of which is micro scales uh, and the example of which we can see it on a micro scale 
uh, particularly the NCZ process for uh, for the silicon crust. I mean the CZ is uh, with the people uh, know it especially uh, the people who are working in the crystallography they, they know uh, the people who are growing the single crystal material they know what is mean by uh, CZ process for silicon is basically a Kralsky process uh, or Zolkrasky process for uh, silicon for the growth of a single crystal. I mean it's a well defined techniques maybe later on somewhere in the course we will define that in full detail that what is mean by uh, CZ process for uh, the silicon. So alter lattice parameter just like you can see it here for yourself. I mean we have uh, I mean you can here compare the lattice structures of nano and bulk materials. So what's the difference we have? I mean you can idealize the difference for yourself. So what actually uh, you find if you compare these structure. So you can see that we have uh, I mean initially this, this is the original structures. And this is when we uh, do, uh, I mean, we, we proceed toward the nano structures, we proceed towards the nano materials formation. So, what actually we find, we find the shortening of the bond near the surface. I mean, this is the first factor that we observe. And what we have afterward, so afterwards, uh, we find surface reconstructions. This is the key thing that we observe. So mechanical strength, uh, I mean, if we calculate it for the valve crystal, so the calculated value for the mechanical strength of Abdelai's crystal increases from 100 to 1000 times uh, than the experimental one. So uh, differentiate between the wires and nanocomposites. Similarly, the transitions to higher strength occur at about 10 micron, that is about the nanoscales. Uh, and for which we can justify two possible reasons. Uh, the first reason might be the lower number of defect inside the nanowire and the second fact might be uh, the, the pure surface uh, defect. These might be uh, the two possible uh, reasons. So that's all uh, we have for this lecture. Thanks for watching. But stay tuned for the next lecture because in next lecture we will move towards the optical properties of the material. So stay tuned with us for lecture number 11. Till then, bye bye.